You're right. How'd you get it? Perfect. Perfect. Square root of 110. You got it. Hey, Skylar. Number two. What did you get? You are correct. How did you get that? Because there's more than one way to do that problem. Sixteen and six. Okay, good. Did anybody do that in a different way? Go ahead, Ben. Perfect. Perfect. Does anybody know what property is allowing us to do them and get the same answer? A couple properties, actually. Yeah. Product property is one of them for sure. And then because we have different products, we're just doing them in a different order. Mm -mm. Yes, or you could argue associative, but you're right, maybe, yeah. So yeah, yeah, it allows us to rearrange, depending on if you're using grouping symbols or not. Uh, she said commutative property, which is a lot, like, that's the property that says 3 times 2 is 6 and 2 times 3 is 6, yeah, okay. Um, all right, number 3 goes to Billy. Uh, do you think you could think through this one a little bit, like what you're allowed to multiply together and what you're not. Good. And so what's that? Yeah. Bam, there it is. All done. All right, and the next one goes to Amberly. Uh, fourth root, x squared. Forgot the index. That happens a lot. That's good. Okay, are there any questions about these four? Because I know not everybody started with these today. Four. Uh, yeah, the PDF file didn't come through that nicely uh, on the copy centers version. That, uh, that might happen more than once in this packet. If you get to something in the packet and you can't read it, just let me know. I'll translate it for you. I, they're, like I said, their reader software is different than mine, so it just causes some problems every once in a while. Okay, so today's topic, a little bit different. You might have noticed if you were looking ahead at the examples a little bit. Today's topic is combining radicals. So to be clear, yesterday we took, about, took care of simplifying radicals. Today we're combining radicals. What does that mean? We're going to add them and subtract them. Ultimately, we still have to multiply them and divide them before we're ready to take a decent quiz on this stuff. So today, we're going to take care of uh, combining radicals with numbers and combining radicals with variables in them. Um, but I wanted to review, before we go ahead and combine radicals, I wanted to review this idea of combining uh, within the context of combining like terms. So, my very smart, period 8, honors algebra 2, I am going to ask you a series of very very easy questions. So easy that I need you to answer in unison. Almost nice and loud so the folks at home can hear it, okay? Not too loud, but nice and loud, okay? All right, so here is your set of very, very easy, easy questions. The first question is this. I need to know the sum of 3 and 2. <laughs> I don't have words. I don't have words. There's, there's just not words for that. Thanks for the effort. All right. So <laughs> the next very, very easy question is this. I need to know now the sum of 3x and 2x. Oh, yes. Very good. That one was actually much better. Okay. Next one. I want to do... 3a plus 2a. 5a. Very good. Okay, last one. Let's see if you can make a prediction about what this sum is. I want you to do 3 root 2 plus 2 root 2. What's that? Very good. You taught yourself the lesson. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, the idea in combining, aka adding and subtracting, radical expressions is uh, the idea lies in the fact that you're just combining like radicals. So we're really only allowed to combine radicals if they are like, which means they have to have the same radical part, kind of like 
two x and three x had the same variable part. You're probably saying, why does it work like this, Mrs. Lucas? Your honor students, you're curious about the why. Go ahead, Ben. Yeah, yeah, we're going to get there in a minute. But why does it work like this? Does anybody know? Okay, well, let's talk about that then. The, it's important to understand the why. What do you have to say, Joe? Not quite. You're close, though. That's just coincidence, sort of. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and throw this one out there. Um, I have a question for you. Answer honestly, please. Do you know what the square root of 2 is to 10 decimal places? No, no, you don't. Uh, and, uh, uh, fun fact, I don't either. I don't, I don't know what the square root of 2 is to 10 decimal places. I would need my calculator for it. But there's power in that idea that I don't know what the square root of 2 is. The square root of 2, because I don't know what it is, is something that I, you know, I don't know in math class. And what do we call things that we don't know in math class? Variables. Yeah, very good. X. <laughs> Unimportant. Oh, heavens. Okay, so the square root of 2 uh, behaves a lot like X in this case because we don't know what it is. It's you know, got uh, it's an irrational number. It's a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. So there's really no rhyme or reason to the decimal that follows the one. Um, it's unpredictable even. So we have this idea that the square root of 2 behaves a lot like x. And it's in that way that we can now compare 3 square root of 2 to 2 square root, I'm sorry, 3 square root of 2 plus 2 square root of 2 to all of the problems above it in the list. That square root of 2 there acts like a variable. So when I say combine like radicals, it's actually like I'm saying combine like terms. So hopefully that helps you remember the idea that when we add like radicals, that radical part just comes along for the ride. All right, so if we take a look at part A, that one has now been done for us. Uh, 3 square roots of 2 plus 2 square roots of 2 is just 5 square roots of 2. Okay, part B. We have 5 cube roots of 3, take away 1 cube root of 3. So if we have 5 cube roots of 3 and we're asked to take away 1 cube root of 3, yep, that is 4 cube roots of 3. I'm going to go ahead and give you another way of looking at it if you're not a fan of combining like terms. Uh, what you could look at this problem, and this will help us, as Ben was saying, when we have variables in a little bit, what you can do is treat that cube root of 3 like it's a greatest common factor, because it is. And you can take that cube root of 3 out of the problem. When you take that cube root of 3 out of the problem, what you have left over is 5 minus 1 in parentheses. So 5 minus 1 is 4. So what we have there is 4 times the cube root of 3. Uh, just written in a different way. Remember, don't write it unless you understand it. Everybody see where the 4 comes from, why the cube root of 3 is just there. I don't know what the cube root of 3 is. I need a calculator to find it up to 10 decimal places. So it behaves like x. Uh, as we move through, oops, as we move through and uh, take a look at part C there, you may notice, you're like, oh man, we don't have like radicals. So what do we do? Got any ideas? Oh, I heard it. Joe? Yeah, you simplify first and see if you can get like radicals before you combine. So we're going to use what we did in yesterday's lesson and the lesson before to simplify first and then combine. So I have 4 square roots of 2. Uh, that doesn't simplify. We just said the square root of 2 is an irrational number. We can't simplify that. Uh, but the square root of 18 does simplify. Square root of 18, that guy breaks down into 9 times 2 when you square root each piece. Uh, so what we have going on here is 4 square roots of 2 
take away three square roots of two. And then what's nice about this guy is that I do notice I do have the same radical part. So I can now combine them. You could take out that square root of two like it's a GCF and then do the four minus three or you could use our combined like terms approach. Four square roots of two, take away three square roots of two is one square root of two. We don't really write the one in front. You can if you want to, it's not wrong. Uh, but I like to leave my answer a little more simplified. Questions about A, B, or C? All right, part D. All oh, right, so we don't have uh, like radicals. I'd like to be able to add these, but I can't right now. I have the cube root of five and the cube root of 40. Those radicals aren't the same. So what can I do? I think you're simplifying the cube root of 40, right? Yeah. So we could break that guy down and see what happens. Uh, she said it, it does break down to eight times five. The largest perfect cube factor of 40 is eight. Don't forget about your two out in front there. Um, I think that happened a couple of times on the homework last night. The cube root of eight is two. And then we have the cube root of five there. This is going to be four cube roots of five. Next, um, I want to bring down that other term that I have there. So this guy's got to come down so that he can be added in. That didn't simplify. So I just brought down my first term. And now look, I do have the same radical part. Square root of five. I don't know what it is. I'd have to grab my calculator. I don't know what the cube root of five is. Uh, so it behaves a lot like x to me. This is like adding 2x and 4x, and that would be 6x. Well, it's not x, though. It's not. Uh, this is going to be 6 times the cube root of 5. So that's how you combine like radicals when your radicands are just integers. So now you get to practice just a little bit have you tried just a couple of those and then I have to teach you how to do this with letters yes yes with letters y'all good oh good <laughs> glasses are important okay so now let's do this thing with letters shall we uh, the same idea still applies um, you know we're not really necessarily changing uh, any part of the process uh, so now's a good time to talk about what the process is. As you were going through and doing your independent practice, I like to think that there are two steps to combining like radicals, two steps to executing today's lesson successfully. Uh, does anybody know what you would do first for each of the problems that you see? Tonight, here, what do you do first? Maybe I need to go back a slide. So what do we do first? What's that first step look like? Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, you simplify each radical in the expression. That's correct, okay. And then what do you do? I heard it. Was that you, Kendall? Yeah, you combine like radicals. Very good, and if they're not like, well then you're done, right? You can't put things together that aren't like terms. So those are our two steps. We simplify and then we combine if possible. So as you take a look at example two, what I see are like radical parts. <coughs> Do you see how they have the square root of 5x in both of them? But when you look at the coefficients, you have 2 and then 2x. Ah, those aren't like. Uh, so let me show you how these problems are done. Uh, a few moments ago, I taught you an alternative way. Uh, besides just combining like radicals. I said you could take out a GCF. So it is in this manner or in these problems that that technique becomes handy. What I see here is I have the square root of 5x and then one of my students who pays a lot of attention to detail also noticed uh, that we have a factor of 2 in the problem. So we could actually take out a greatest common factor and write down what we have left over. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You can take out a two and a square root of five x. 
what we have left over is then 1 plus x. And if you look in the parentheses there, that doesn't simplify. <laughs> 1 plus x, you can't combine those. So that's done. That's as far as you can go with this type of problem. I'm so sorry, what? That's the answer. I know, it looks really strange. That's, that's probably the weird part about this. But uh, once you get over the fact that the answer looks weird, I heard I heard a question out there somewhere. I don't know where it was though. Was that you, Michelle? Yeah. What'd you What'd you have to say? Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Way to make some sense of it. Good job. Okay. Part B. I have the square root of x to the third minus the square root of twenty-seven x. So we're gonna go with what Joe had to say. You wanna go ahead and simplify first, and then combine. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to simplify that radical by using my product property. And then I ask myself, you know, what's the perfect square factor that divides evenly into 12? It's 4. Uh, so this is going to be 2, root 3 for that part. And then I ask myself, how many times does 2 go into 3? That's 1 time. And then there is 1x left over. And then we go through that step where you have to pretty it up a little bit. Uh, to simplify this radical, to finish up that part of the problem, it's going to be 2x plus u times the square root of 3x. And now I'm going to go ahead and simplify, just brought down my minus there, I'm going to go ahead and simplify the square root of 27x. Uh, applying my product property, I'm allowed to break that radical apart around its product. So I take the square root of 27 times the square root of x. Square root of 27, the perfect square factor of 27, uh, that's the largest, is 9. And then, uh, so this will simplify to be 3 root 3, because 9 times 3 is 27. And then I have the square root of x that comes down. So to pretty this one up, I get 3 times the square root of 3x uh, for that simplified radical there. What I do notice is that I have like radical parts. I have one there and there that are the same. That's what I mean there. So I could take that out like it's a greatest common factor. So I'm going to take that square root of 3x out of the set of parentheses and then I write what I have left over. So I factor out the square root of 3x and then what's left over is 2x minus 3. Part C, same method. You simplify and then you combine if possible. So I would start by trying to simplify over here uh, that, bring down my 4 so I don't forget about it. And then we have the square root of 2 times the square root of x to the fifth. Well, 4 times the square root of 2 doesn't simplify. The square root of 5 does. 2 goes into 5 twice. And then there is 1 left over. So to neaten this guy up, we have 4x squared outside the radical and 2x in my rat hand. And then, bring down my minus here, and then I'm going to simplify the square root of 50x by using my product property to take the square root of 50, square root of x. The largest perfect square factor of 50 is 25. 25 times 2 yields a product of 50, and then I can use my product property to square root each piece. Bring down my minus. Uh, so what I have there is 5 square roots of 2 uh, times your square root of x. Uh, so what we get there is 5 square roots of 2x. So you see, once again, you have this like radical part because their radicands are exactly the same. Uh, so that radical actually acts like a greatest common factor. You can pull it out of the problem. And then what you have left over is just 4x squared and the minus 5. Problem number last. Same process. You simplify and then you combine if possible. 
So I'm going to simplify 3 times the cube root of 6x. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, oh, that doesn't simplify. That guy's done. I can't take the cube root of 6, and I can't take the cube root of x, so that's done. Uh, what I do notice uh, over here is that I can break that guy down into the cube root of 48 and then the cube root of x. And the cube root of 48 actually does simplify. Uh, the largest uh, perfect cube that goes evenly into 48 is just 8. 8 times 6 is 48. So what we get there is 2 cube roots of 6 times the cube root of x. Uh, pretty that up a little bit. That's 2 times the cube root of 6x. And then don't forget about this guy over here. I'm going to bring that down. 3 cube roots of 6x there. And do you look at that? Finally, holy cow. One that actually has a like radical part and coefficients that are like. So this is kind of like the ones that we did earlier in the lesson. Uh, you just can combine your, your coefficients there. So we get 3 cube roots of 6x minus 2 cube roots of 6x. You could pull out that variable radical if you'd like as a GCF. Or I'm just going to combine. Uh, you're going to get 1 uh, cube roots of 6x. And you don't have to write that one there. The big kids usually don't. You good? You ready to try some? All right, go ahead. We'll let you try some. So that is all yours. And then in your own words, we've kind of described and been using and abusing uh, our own process, step-by-step -step process for simplifying radicals, or I should say combine radicals. I'd like you to kind of talk to me about your steps. What's the process you're going to use when you're doing your problems tonight? And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, fill some of these in so you can start to check.